Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's see who's in my green room tonight. We have got a rare and exclusive interview with probably the most famous supermodel in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen her on a talk show before. I don't think she's ever done one, certainly not in this country. The one and only Claudia Schiffer. <laughs> Looking stunning, of course. Thank you for joining us. Also on the show, uh, he's the number one choice for your thinking man's comedian. Well, when Stephen Fry isn't available, it is. <laughs> The always funny Mr. Dara O'Brien. Hey, Dara. <laughs> and as if that weren't enough, we have the star of one of my all time favourite television shows from Sex and the City, Kristen Davis. Yeah! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My next guest is not only a movie star from films such as Boys in the Hood, Friday and 21 Jump Street, he's also a real-life rap legend. It's Ice Cube! <laughs> the Cube is in my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the Cube, right there. And we have music from one of the most talented and gifted songwriters of his generation. I adore his stuff. It is Mr Rufus Wainwright. There he is. <laughs> it's Rufus Wainwright. <laughs> yes, I say a genius. That's what I call him. Rufus, great to have you here. Thank, Thank you for being here. Okay, before we get to that, uh, fresh from the birth of his son, Simon Cowell has been out and about on the beaches of Miami. I'm sure you've seen some of these pictures. He's been out in Miami with his two adorable family favourites. They're called... <laughs> I'm not talking about his moves, I'm talking about the dogs. <laughs> the dogs are called Squiddly and Diddly. Because the moves are called Wiggly and Jiggly. <laughs> okay. Why, if you look like that, why would you walk around always topless? <laughs> I mean, seriously, he likes the bare chest he looks so much, he uses it as evening wear. This is from the same set of photos. That's him out in the evening. <laughs> also, they're going out to dinner or something. Who wants to sit opposite that while you're eating dinner? <laughs> Did you order the chicken breast? No, but I'm staring at it right now. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for a gift for your girlfriend, can I suggest something I saw on the internet this week, an actual product. It's a hand sanitizer cream, OK? No need to grab a pen, because I think you'll remember the name. Here it is. It's called Maybe You Touch Your Genitals. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Which is genius. That's like the best brand name for a product ever. Someone's coming in. Oh, maybe they touched their genitals. There <laughs> Um, a romantic 53-year-old man from South Carolina was left red-faced when he tried to pay for a romantic meal and get this true story, apparently. Tried to pay for a meal, a night out, took someone on a date, tried to pay for the meal with a fake banknote, one trillion dollars. <laughs> a trillion dollar note. Thought he was going to get away with it. I mean, it's hard enough to get rid of a Scottish tenor. Never mind a trillion dollar note. <laughs> uh, Christine, have you been, I mean, you've been on dates, obviously, over the years, but any memorably bad ones? Well, I am from South Carolina, and I did go on a date one time where someone said to me, well, that's not really in the South, is it? And I was like, this date is over. Wow. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that a firing offense? Is it was just strange. Like, look at a map. I mean, okay. you know? Fair point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a geography <laughs> test in the middle of the day. Yeah. It was weird. Weird. Well, you know, my dog, if you don't know how to find your way down South, you're no use to that lady. Like, you, need a master, yeah. you know? If you need a map, Dara. You ain't getting invited back. Uh, Cube, any bad dates for you? Surely not for you. Yeah, man. You know, one day uh, I was I was in high school and I went to go over this chick's house and uh, man, uh, as soon as she walked out the room, her grandmother looked at me and said, "Why don't you just get the hell out of here?" Wow. <laughs> she just didn't like the look of you, or had you been on a date with the grandmother before? And not been? <laughs> I don't know. She was just one of those mean grandmothers, man. You know how they are. <laughs> yeah, mean grandmother. <laughs> okay, let's ask you, Rufus. Any first date terrible moments um, you can remember? Or God, I've been, I've been debating whether to tell this to anybody for uh, about 15 years now. So I figure, you know, on television, it's a good time. Let's do it. In front of the nation. Um, but I, uh, I went on a, a date many, many years ago, about 15 years ago. And uh, I, I guess I had a little too much to drink before... Uh, dinner arrived, and um, we were sitting there, and then I pooped in my pants. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 So, 
Uh, you know what? I think we have a winner, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah! Right <laughs> Worst first day um, ever, Rufus Wayne. Worst day. Worst day. <laughs> OK, let's get my first guest out. She's one of the original supermodels. She's actually taking a rare television appearance. It's the one and only Claudia Schiffer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, Claudia, my, now let me just start. How tall are you? Because very few people, even in heels, have to bend down to kiss me. How tall are you in your without your, your heels on? I'm one eighty-one. Oh no! Can we have that in English? Five eleven. Five eleven. <laughs> I don't do the European things yet. Right. I haven't learned them yet. Okay. Well, start. It's, it's great to have you here. You don't. Am I right in thinking you haven't done a talk show in this country before? No. And so why is that? Is that is there a reason for that? Or I mean, you've been asked. I'm sure. I know we've asked you loads of times. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, well, I just thought there's no reason we need to do a talk show unless, because uh, I'm kind of shy, it's a sort of hell for me tonight. And only you, of course, well, and no other talk shows. You say oh. you're shy as hell, but that, I think some of us would find that hard to, not to accept, but to understand, because I've seen you modelling, and you're out there, you, you do the catwalk, and that's in front of an audience. You have photographs, sometimes you're wearing, you know, not that much in the way of clothing, sometimes, as right. all models have to. So you're not shy in that way, but you are shy, what, no. talking, or...? I am just shy when there are lots of people. So um, I'm okay when we're just one-on-one. -on -one. Uh -huh. Or maybe four people or six. But more than that, it's not really comfortable for me. It doesn't feel good. So I'm like, I'm a really, really shy person. And um, it does help wearing makeup and getting dressed up because I feel like I'd be, I'm someone else. So you're sort of hiding behind an image almost? Yeah, that's why modeling kind of worked. Yeah. I thought it was never going to work until I put the makeup on and then you, you couldn't tell that I was turning red all the time. Because wow. blushing all the time. I thought, hey, this works. But you I can were, just be sexy and uh, not be myself. How old were you when you were found as a model? You were still in your 17, teens? Yeah. So yeah, 17, yeah. Yeah, I was still in school. And wh so you were in school, but where did they, they didn't come into the school. Where did they see you? Where did they find you? No, I went, it was my first night out. And uh, I'm from a small town, and Dusseldorf was the next big town in Germany. So I went dancing with my friends, and then this French agent came up and said, uh, could you come do Paris? And I thought, wow, really? Surely it's really dark here. They, they must not really see how I look like. <laughs> so not, surely the next one they're not going to call me. But they did. And then I thought, they must still be making a mistake. So when I went out of school for one day, I said to, to my teachers that I was sick and went for a day to Paris. And I thought, once they see the pictures, they're going to go, no, no, no. This is it. Send her back. So, but no. going to Paris, being a shy young woman, then going to Paris that first time, that must have been pretty intimidating as well, wasn't it? It was, yeah. No, especially because I didn't understand a word of French or English. So I just thought, if I'm very nice to everyone, and I just say always oh, yes, then maybe that works. Well, yes, it can get <laughs> and, you into uh, trouble, of course, but I mean, it's, uh, yes. it makes friends. Yes. So you were in Paris, so people were just speaking to you in French, and they assumed you knew what they were saying. Exactly, yeah, especially the photographer said, you know, do this or that, or can you put this on? I was like, yeah, 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 we, 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 we. I had no idea what anyone was saying. <laughs> My agent was talking to me, you know, yeah, we, we, we yeah. I'll do, it, I'll do whatever you want, and I just didn't understand anything. So you speak German fluently, of course, I would hope. Yeah, uh, a, bit, a bit of German. And your English is very fluent as well. So when you came, when you moved to England, how did you find being a German in England? What did you miss about Germany? What did you enjoy about England? Well, if it's not football seasons and you see all the headlines about the Germans, it's not that time, then yeah. I'm quite relaxed and we, actually they're quite nice. Do you feel we haven't moved on enough <laughs> still? Not doing football season. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I can't read anything. Okay. And why? It just makes you crazy? You get mad? Or? No, I'm joking. No. Okay. I also have a sense of humour. Well, <laughs> But that's not always the case. But you see, these are the preconceptions we have about German people. Is that the I know, but, do but I do have a sense of humour. I do, before you say anything else, I do shave my armpits, I shave my legs, and I do not wear socks and sandals. Wow, OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's several of these I was actually going to ask you. These are, how, how German are you? Uh, but you're right. quite, you're an efficient person, I guess. That I am, yes. OK. Do you like a sausage? That's another German question here. <laughs> Which sausage are you talking about? The big bratwurst. The one to eat? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> OK. OK. Uh, uh, do you... This is a question, which is... And yeah. this is the, probably the ultimate British stereotype idea of a German. Right. Have you ever got up early to reserve a sun lounger? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps with a towel. Nope. 
No, OK, no. so... So we consider you a German, but some of my questions were a bit stupid. <laughs> yes, let's we'll expect it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, how, do you, uh, how do you cope with being in the public eye as much as you are? Because I noticed a few years ago, it doesn't seem to be such now, um, but it used to be there were a lot of pictures in the newspapers of you on the school one on yeah. a regular basis. Uh, yeah. And they were, and you always look stunning. I mean, we have some of the pictures here. Uh, you know, there were, and so they guess, I guess you had paparazzi waiting outside most days. Yes. Every day. How do you deal with that kind of thing? Uh, you know, first of all, I, I knew that I had to sort of dress up a bit because all the other moms looked really pretty when they brought their kids <laughs> to school. <laughs> I got to do the same. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, I didn't really mind it. I just thought you just pretend they're not there and just do your thing and don't really watch out for them. And then when I realized that my kids were sort of going, I'm famous, um, I realized we're going to move to the countryside, which then we did, we moved to Suffolk. So you moved away to, so the children wouldn't grow up in that environment and so they wouldn't have a weird idea yes, of who I they were. Yes, I think it's not about. great for them, no. Yeah. I can cope with that, I don't, I don't really, not really bother by it one way or the other. Yeah. But you're very pragmatic, aren't you? I guess that's a German thing as well. You seem very kind of like, sorted about it. I am very realistic and very logical, yes. Yeah. Do, you, do you make lists? I do. <laughs> I make them at night before I go to bed. Right. What is the, the nighttime list for? Things to do while you're asleep? What are, what are... <laughs> no, what, so for the next day, you make plans for the next day? Yes, I make plans for the next day so I don't have to think about it. Or wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, oh, yeah. I have to do this or that. And so, last night, before you went to sleep, knowing you were doing this show today... Oh, my God. You know what I dreamt last night? I was on a date with you. Wow. <laughs> But what happened in this dream? Where did I take you on this day? Was, uh, it, was, was, I, a good, uh, you, was I a good day? That you were showing me your garden. Wasn't I? Hold on. <laughs> not that garden. Oh, okay. No, no, the green garden. <laughs> <laughs> this has got very German. No. Uh, so, so uh, but did you make a list where you... Because I know you were worried about coming on, at least concerned. You didn't, you know... I just prefer seeing you without an audience, that's okay. all. I don't know. blame you, I don't blame you. Exactly, it's just, you know, mm. it's just you and I. Yeah, I make house calls. Um, <laughs> okay, let's talk... Now, here's the thing. You've just brought out a hair care range called Essence... Is it Ultime? Essence Ultime. Uh, and so this is just like shampoo and conditioner and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there'll obviously be an advertising campaign, but yes. part of the campaign is something you've come up with, this idea of a uh, flick, and you directed yes. these as yeah, well. Yeah, so my you? husband is doing a film, and I just actually took a few of his cameraman and cameras and stuff, and, so I, I, and then I called a few of my girlfriends, and I did this little short film called The Flick, where everyone flicks their hair from one side to the other. And this is something you're going to put online, and you want people to add to this, is that right? Yes, it's going to go probably YouTube, Twitter, and you can um, send your own video in where you flick your hair, and then um, the best ones will be put attached to the end, so it becomes a very, very long TV commercial. So it could be like the longest commercial in the history of commercials when yes, you finish finished up. Yeah. With all, uh, and so far you have, as you said, you used your friends, and these are uh, mainly mums, you know, and friends yeah. of yours. Yeah. Very beautiful bunch of people. I know, I'm very lucky. With. All my friends look great. Okay, I'm going to show you this. Have a look at this. This is the Claudia Schiffer, The Flick. Okay. Yeah. Very, very beautiful people right there. I think we have some people in the green room tonight who are ideal candidates. Uh, let's go see. Yeah. Uh, who fancies uh, giving us a flick from the green room? Rufus. You got, you got to love it. I got a, slight, got I got a slight flick. Okay, well, let's see, yeah, because yours is minor gel. That's a bit flick. of gel. Well, let's have a little minor flick from Rufus. Okay, I'll do, I'll do anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it. Okay, <laughs> let's see Rufus in okay. slow motion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Does anyone have the number for an exorcist? <laughs> Uh, Cube, your hair doesn't take more, so bounces more than flicks, I guess, doesn't it? Do it look like it's flick, man? Oh, uh, <laughs> flick. Cube, if you flick really hard, maybe we'll get a bit of a flick going, a bit of a bounce. You won't get a flick, all right? <laughs> you do <get> flick. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, there's there's kind of an elephant in the room right yeah. there that we have. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
I'll go. I'll, I'll do it. I'll okay. Do it. <laughs> Cube, look at this. This is someone joining in. Cube, okay. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got, Darwin. Let's give us a go, okay. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Okay, let's have a look and see how that looks in slow motion. There must have been, I would have thought, offers you've had for, uh, for money jobs over the years. What's the weirdest one you've had? What's the strangest job you've, you've been offered or asked to do? Uh, there's uh, loads of weird ones, but the strangest one was from um, an Arab prince. Uh, he, he asked if he could hire me for a dinner for a million pounds. Wow. And, presumably and he... I declined. Okay. <laughs> so you declined. You weren't tempted even for a second? I was I asked for some more details. I said, oh, can I come if I bring some security guards? Yes. Can they stand in front of my room at night? Yes. Could one of them maybe be a female security guard sleep in my room? And then they were like, uh, no. Wow. You had a tunnel. And then they, were, they, they, they sort of then it went away. Okay. And I think they got the message. Wow. Claudia, thank you so much for coming on. Wasn't she wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> The fabulous Claudia Schiffer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Claudia. Still to come on the show, Dar O'Brien, Kristen Davis, Ice Cube, and music from Rufus Wainwright. So don't go away. <laughs>